There are five different view modes that you can view your documents with, and you can find them up here on the View tab in the Views group. Now the default that's highlighted is the print layout, so every time you open up Word it's going to be starting up in that view. And the purpose of the print layout, you can hover over it to get more details, is to see how the document will look if printed. If you want to be exact, then you want to go backstage and click on the File tab and go down to Print. And before you click Print, look over here in the Print Preview because what you see there is what's going to come out of your printer. It's a non-editable view. You can't come over here and click in it and make changes to it, but just to be able to see what's going to be coming out of your printer before you click Print. And if there's some things that are arranged not the way you like to see them coming out of your printer, some things that are showing that you don't want to or some things that aren't that you want to show, then of course you can go back and make those changes in the print layout view. Now in the print layout view, as we discussed in an earlier training video, you'll have your horizontal and vertical rulers to show you the margins. So one to zero, the left margin, and then six and a half to seven and a half, the right margin, and then one to zero, top margin, and we have the bottom margin as well. And if you don't see a ruler, again, come back up here on the view tab to the show group, and you can, well, I unchecked it. Let me go ahead and check it. You can check it to see the rulers. And then, of course, within the margin, we've got some text there that's shaded because when I try to click on it, it doesn't allow me to get the cursor in there to edit it. That's known as the header, and we'll talk about this in a later training video, your headers and footers, because what you put in the header section, or the top margin of one page, will be duplicated on the top of every page throughout the entire document. But I digress. Let's keep it simple and cover that in a later training video, and move on to our next view, which is going to be the read mode. Now you can click it up here, and you can see in the pop-up when I hover over it, the best way to read a document, including some tools designed for reading instead of writing, you can click it there or come down below on the status bar and it's right there when you hover over it, read mode. Then there's the default to print layout. It's highlighted. Well, it's a darker shade of blue, but that's the one that we're currently in. And then the last one is the web layout. So you got your more popular ones down below on the status bar that you can click on to change the views or you can do it up here. So let's go ahead and click on read mode. And there's the reading mode. If you want to go ahead and go from one page to the next, it's just like a book. You can come over here and grab it, the page, by clicking on the arrow, and it goes to the next page. Or you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard. Hit left, takes me back. And to see what other options you get, like for the reading mode, click on the view drop-down arrow, and you can edit the document because by default, you're reading it. You're not really into editing it, so it switches to the print layout view so you can make the changes. We'll stay here. You got the navigation pane, so if you want to take a tour, click on it. And if you have any headings within your document that was created by using styles in Word, which we'll talk about in a later training video, so it can identify the headings as I did here, like my heading mentally, click on it, takes you right to it. And then when you're done, go ahead and close out. Let's see what other options we get. We can show comments, but I haven't inserted any comments. Column width, well, there's the default, and let's see what wide brings us. Same thing. Click on it again, go down to column width, and let's do narrow. Well, that's a lot nicer for me when it comes to reading, because when I track a line, if I go from here all the way over to here, and I want to come back, well, that's a bit too far. i got to move my neck a little bit, but it's easier to go ahead and keep the line short, so I can easily track when I get to one end to quickly come right back to the next line and not lose myself as I go all the way over here to find out which line I'm going to be on next. And then let's go ahead and click on view, page color. Ooh, you get a few options like sepia. Well, that's kind of sepia cool. And then finally, you've got the layout here. You can do column or paper layout. And so you're back to pretty much the print layout view. But again, you're going from left to right. It's not narrowed down into columns to keep the line shorter so it doesn't strain the eye on where you're trying to come back to start on the next line for your continued reading pleasure. And then when you're done, to close out, well, you can either go ahead and click on View and say you want to edit the document by going to Print Layout, or better yet, just come down here and click on the Print Layout View. And we're back to where we started. Next is the web layout view. You can hover over that, and when you switch to this view, you can see how your document will look as a web page. So, when you want to save it as a web page, first take a look to see how it will come across, and if you're okay with that, go ahead and save it. It also says it's great if you have wide tables in your document that you want to view. Let's go ahead and click on it, take a gander, and that's how it's going to look when I save it as a web page. 
It's got some of the things like read mode off from the visit us. That's way over here. So I may want to go ahead and edit the document in here and see if I can't hit enter and maybe put it down below so they're together. I'll go ahead and hit undo because I don't want to be working in this mode. I want to take you to another mode like how about the draft? Hover over that. You can switch to this to view just the text in your document and only the text. Click on that. Gets rid of all the images and objects and graphics. You can scroll up and down. Looks nice. And well, there's your page break. That dotted line to let you know that this is going to be on the next page here. And when you click on it, you can look down below in the status bar and it says that you're on page two of a total of two pages. And in any one of these views, if the text appears a little too tiny for you, then you can come down here. Again, we talked about the zoom feature. Click and drag, zoom over to the right. Wow, that helps. Increase it to 148%. If you want to get back to the default, you can click on that percentage right there and say you can go to the page width or at 100%, the way it's going to appear when it comes out of your printer. Let's go to page width and click okie dokie. And the way it's going to come out of the printer, well, you can click and drag this back to 100%. There you go. That wasn't too bad. And then finally, you've got the outline. And it says here that you can see your document in outline form where content is shown as bulleted points. And it's useful for creating headings and moving whole paragraphs within the document. Go ahead and click on it. And there you go. We've got my headings for each section. This is about physically, mentally, emotionally, and scroll up there spiritually. And I'm using the scrolly button on my mouse here. Of course, you've got the scroll bar. You can click and drag to scroll up and down. And you can see we've got these little bulleted points. Well, the plus sign next to the heading. That means if you double click on it really fast, it collapses it. When you collapse it, and I can double click on all of them here, or instead of double clicking on all of them, just to focus on the headings, because maybe I don't want to scroll to get to the next heading, so I can do a quick review of the headings. You can actually come up here on the outlining tab to the outline tools group and click on the show level drop down arrow and say you just want to show level one. It collapses everything to show you the first level. And the first level is all the headings that are in a heading one style. If I had a subheading to that, a heading two style, then I can go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and go to level two. But I don't have any subheadings or level two heading styles in this document, so it doesn't expand to the second level. And we'll talk about heading styles in a later training video. And I'm just getting you worked up to show you how much fun you're going to be having creating documents and making it simple and more efficient when it comes to navigating and working with your documents with all these fancy features. And so something to look forward to. And then you see down below each heading, when I collapse it, you got this fuzzy line. That means that there's actually text below it. So if you don't see a fuzzy line, then you don't have anything below it. So when you go ahead and double click to expand it, or you can go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and show all levels, including the body of the text for each heading. And you can also actually click and drag these bulleted points, at least for the heading that collapses everything from the heading below to the next heading. Double click. You can actually click and drag that. And you can see when I move around, you get this line here with the black arrow pointing to the right. Wherever I put that, that's where it's going to drop it and reorder my document. Let go. So, no longer step one is my first heading, it's step two. And when I'm done, I can go ahead and close out of the outline view. It's the only view that has the close button. You can do that, or you can come down here and click on the print layout. Either way, click close, takes us back to the print layout. And step two is now the first heading, and then step one is the second. But I'm going to come up here and click on the undo button. So I can undo that and go back to the correct sequence of step one, then two. And then finally, I want to talk about the last location bookmark. After you close the document and reopen it on this or another computer, it will display a pop-up that will have a welcome back note. That will display how long ago this document was last accessed. And when you click on it, it will take you to the last place that you worked on. So if I come down here and I click right here, step four, and I'm like, okay, I'm done. And I go ahead and close out and I save it. And it's on my desktop, and I double-click and open it back up. There it is. Welcome back. You want to pick up where you left off? Of course. Well, wow, that was fast. It collapsed on me. But it left me with a little bookmark tag that when I go ahead and hover over it, there we go, it's back. And that's where it says I last left off at was step four emotionally a few seconds ago. Ooh, that's pretty eerie. It's keeping track of my time and where I last worked. Or 
That's very beneficial because when I click on it, it takes me right to it.